grace and peace to you all on this Ash Wednesday as we come before the Lord and prepare our hearts for a brief time of worship. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent, the preparation period before the death and resurrection of our Savior. Ash Wednesday's purpose is to meditate on our mortality, sinfulness, and need of a Savior, to renew our commitment to daily repentance in the Lenten season in all of life, and to remember with confidence and gratitude that Christ has conquered death and sin. As we prepare our hearts, I encourage us to be prayerful. Get rid of any distractions for the next several minutes. You aren't just watching a video, but you are worshiping the Lord with your family of Christ. Our God calls us to worship with these words from the psalmist. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for we shall praise him, our help and our God. Please join me in prayer. Covenant God of love and mercy, we come to you at the beginning of these 40 days, remembering how Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days in the wilderness. We remember how he steadfastly set his face toward Jerusalem, obedient and living and dying, even to his death on a cross. For the next 40 days, may we also remember that obedience. May we remember that humility as we follow our Savior Jesus Christ. In our everyday lives, at home, at work, and in your world, prepare us anew, we pray, to keep our hearts and minds fixed on Jesus, ready and willing from now on to live for him, which we pray in your holy name and all God's people said. Amen. I invite us to rise in body or in spirit, wherever you may be as you worship the Lord. But the song created me a clean heart. Created me a clean heart. Oh. Let's declare to the Lord and cast me not away. Restore, restore. 
cast me not away. We'll sing that to the Lord. Cast me not away. And cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let's make it our prayer. Restore us. The joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. You may be seated. As we continue our worship today, I invite us to participate in this response reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Surely you desire the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. It is good to worship together on this Ash Wednesday to begin our journey to the cross with Christ. Uh, yes, to be reminded of our frailty, of our flesh, of our humanity, but also to be encouraged and reminded that in Christ, we are redeemed, and that in Christ, we are risen with Him, and that gives us great hope. I want to share a brief message this morning, or this evening, or whenever you are worshiping with us. Um, I've called this trusting God's time, or trusting God's timing. And um, I just think back, this Ash Wednesday, this Lent season, I think it's so appropriate for us to step back about a year uh, to where this all started. I remember it well. About a year ago, there was a mysterious virus. We took precautions, there was a shelter in place, then lockdown, wash your hands, wear your mask, watch your distance. In those first days of difficult decisions and adapting and adjusting on the fly, I remember thinking, two weeks, we got this. Then, we'll be back by Easter. Oh, what a celebration it will be. Then, pandemic. We just want to get back to normal. Well, what even was normal, right? And, and is it even a normal that we really want to get back to? One thing's for certain in all of this, that as the year went on, the protests and politics, sharp polarization, self-isolation, it's all left us anxious and tired disappointed and stressed. But one of the ways that God has been working in me is helping me to grow in faith as I trust Him in the midst of all these changing circumstances. As followers of Jesus, we're invited 
in the midst of the storms to keep our eyes on our Savior. And in the midst of this pandemic, surely God is teaching us, reminding us, as Pastor Kevin DeYoung stated just a week or two ago, that we are frail, that life is fragile, and that we depend upon God for everything. If we're learning that in this season of pandemic, this is what we too are called to learn in the season of Lent. And so I want to invite you to trust God and to trust God's timing in your life. God, who is always working in our lives, though often, yes, God works in mysterious ways. It is always, always for His glory and in all things for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. God is present with us on the way, and we receive so much strength by His promise, the, the reality, in fact, of His protection and His provision in perfect wisdom as we follow Him. And so I'm sure that you, like me, are longing for the end of this pandemic. I'm sure you, like me, have decisions or desires, some may be significant, some may be just small, that we are eager or anxious to press into in our own lives. But friends, one of the things that the Lord has impressed upon me in this season is that God is not in a hurry, but we so often are. He's reminded me of the time that Jesus' good friend was sick, Lazarus, whom he loved. And we read about this in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. We'll pick up for a minute at verse 5. And the Apostle John says this, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, that's Mary, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Why, Jesus? Why this delay? Why stay two days longer when you know your friend, Lazarus, whom you love, is sick? I think this is an appropriate passage for us to think on, reflect on, on Ash Wednesday as we begin our journey with Jesus to the cross. We contemplate Lazarus's mortality. We know that we also are frail and fragile. A few verses down, John tells us in verse 17 that by the time Jesus finally comes, Lazarus has in fact died, and he's been in the tomb for four days. And John picks back up at verse 20. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, this is the same Mary and Martha that we read about back in Luke chapter 10. You may know the story. Martha hosts Jesus in her home. Mary, her sister, is over to help, or so she thinks. And Martha sat, uh, sorry, and Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to him. Listened to all that he said while Martha was distracted by all the preparations and, and everything that had to be Done, and finally she brings this lament, she brings this complaint to the Lord about her sister. And Jesus responds, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken from her. I think often... It is in our opportunities to wait on the Lord, 
to live in faith, to trust his timing, like perhaps we've been asked in the midst of this pandemic, it is in opportunities like this that the Lord actually uses to reveal our hearts, just like he used here for Martha. And in those opportunities, and I mean, we may as well be honest with the Lord because he knows our hearts, right? But in those opportunities, if we can even be honest with ourselves for a moment, so often we are just like Martha. We are worried and upset about many things. We try to hoist the world on our shoulders, which uh, is pretty exhausting, isn't it? We have blind spots. We're distracted. We're just as self-focused and self-indulgent as the rest of the world. Even when we start with our best motives in mind, our self-reliance can take over. Now, there's a lot going on, but the invitation, I think, that we hear from Jesus during the season of Lent is this. Throughout church history, followers of Jesus have spoken of three enemies of the soul, the world, the flesh, and the devil. All three always tempt us to take the easy way out, right? Lent started as a... uh, a symbol, a way to remember and live into Jesus' 40 days of fasting in the desert when the devil came three times and tempted him and said, you know, Jesus, yes, you are sovereign, you are king of all of this, but you know, did God really say, short circuit, if you do this, I'll give you everything in the world. See, the world, the flesh, and the devil always tempt us to take the easy way out. They always offer us, as as one pastor so beautifully said, a crown without a cross, pleasure without pain, success without sacrifice, admiration without affliction. Friends, but this is not the way of Jesus. We struggle to experience the life God has for us Because deep down, we still want to get to the top of the mountain without trusting God through the valley. We see a path that looks more appealing, or if I can switch metaphors, we choose the shallow stream only to miss out on the ocean depths of God's grace. I guess what I'm trying to say is is this, that the Spirit of Christ will never settle for significantly changing our circumstances. No matter how much we might long for that. And the Spirit of Christ will not settle for simply making us feel better about ourselves. No matter how much sometimes we just want that little pick-me-up boost of confidence. Instead, the Spirit invites us into the way of Jesus. A much deeper way. When Jesus stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Remember, Martha anxious, the disciples antsy, his dear friend Lazarus dying. Ultimately, Jesus says in verse 4, here's why. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. How does this help us trust God's timing? We're anxious. We're tired of the pandemic, of the precautions. And yet Jesus calls us to follow him. To follow him to the cross, which is foolishness to the world. But the wisdom of God unto salvation for those who who believe. We trust God's timing. We talk about that. One of our core beliefs in the Reformed tradition is God's sovereignty and providence. And I love Heidelberg Catechism uh, uh, question and answer 28, which just paraphrase says, what does this all benefit us? What does it benefit us to believe that God is sovereign and control of all things that that uh, to believe in God's pro-
providence, his protection, his provision. Here's the answer. Well, because we can be patient in adversity. We can be thankful in prosperity. And we can be confident that nothing, no creature can separate us from his love. And so, friends, on this Ash Wednesday, know this. What God may be revealing in us, God is also refining. Lent is not just about conquering one or two sins or habits that we find annoying about ourselves and we would rather give up. Lent is about surrendering our will and our ways to follow Jesus and partner with the Holy Spirit in the life of the kingdom. Somehow Ash Wednesday is the beginning of this transformation. And it comes as the Holy Spirit daily renews and cleanses us, dying to self, rising with Christ, His Spirit alive in you, in me. Not only are we redeemed from slavery to sin and death, but we are risen with Christ as sons and daughters, and we are called to be agents of his hope and healing in the world. And so this Ash Wednesday, this season of Lent, I want to invite you, whatever is going on, certainly we're still in the midst of pandemic, but all those other decisions in your life, those desires of what you would love to see change, the circumstances you want to see be different, Trust that God is at work and trust in his timing. Be patient in this adversity. Follow Jesus with our full heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is our invitation to the spirit life. I need the spirit's help to do this. I'm sure you do too. And he will. We were planning uh, music at MRC just to close, and um, on the first Sunday of Lent, our closing hymn is going to be Because He Lives. And um, our uh, accompanist, who's going to be playing that, sent me an email about a week later and said, you know, as I was thinking, is Because He Lives really appropriate for the first season of Lent? Isn't that like an Easter song? And, uh, well, it is. That is a very astute liturgical observation. But, but this side of the resurrection, it is always Easter. And let's not lose sight of the confidence and hope that we have because Christ wasn't just crucified. He didn't just take on our frail flesh and blood. He didn't just carry that to the cross, though that would be Enough if he did. But on the third day, he rose again. And friends, because he lives, we also can live. Let us live knowing that we are sons and daughters of the risen King and He has given us His Spirit to love and serve and follow Him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning. I have decided, I have decided 
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I invite you to receive a benediction as you go into this Ash Wednesday, into this season of Lent, as you journey with Jesus to the cross and to the empty tomb. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope as you trust in Him. Friends, God loves you. And he invites you to partner with His Spirit in His work. Go into the world to love and serve Him agents of hope and healing who share his gospel that transforms hearts, lives, and communities across Long Island. Let's go in peace to love and serve. Amen.